I have a confession to make. I liked Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1. Was it amazing? No. Did it have a lot of content? Yes. Was it cheap at points? Yes. But I honestly believe there was a good groundwork here. I knew they weren't going to get it right the first time. I knew, yet everybody else seemed to think it was just going to be the smash killer right out of the gate. That, that's not how that works. I expected it to just be simple and to the point. Heck, I didn't even care there wasn't even voice acting initially. Am I glad they put it in later? Of course I was, and I was even surprised that they did and didn't just save it for the sequel. But I knew. I knew we were in for something when the game got a sequel, and the trailer came out and would you look at that, it looked better! Presentation looked better, the gameplay looked better, there were more features, everything looked like a huge step up, and the characters they were announcing were also great. That Squidward reveal trailer has got to be one of the greatest reveals I have ever seen, Smash Ultimates combined. They knew exactly what they were doing with that. Then immediately after, they announced Jimmy Neutron, who also missed out on the first game and further characters which we'll discuss later. I was pumped to see this game in action and I couldn't wait to see the game on November 7th. That was until I got an unexpected email in my inbox. Woo! Yeah baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! On a serious note, thank you so much to Sandbox Strategies and Game Mill Entertainment for sending me an early review code. I I was not expecting that in a million years. Uh, I was hoping I would get a code, but I, I was not thinking I was going to get an early one. So, uh, thank you so much. You know how excited I was whenever I got that email in my inbox. I was coming home from getting a, from getting a haircut. and I, I, Actually, I went to the dentist. I was so excited, I forgot what I did that day. <laughs> a game that I was already excited for and was already planning on covering and the publishers chose me, me, to cover it early? Couldn't pass that up. So let's quit babbling and let's get goofy. Just a quick reminder that, yeah, I did get a review code for the game and yes, I got it early. And while I appreciate it, uh, they didn't give me a script or anything. This video isn't sponsored or anything. They didn't give me a script, none of that stuff. So all the opinions that you're about to see are my opinions alone. It didn't force me to say something different. I have criticisms with this game and we're going to be talking about them. So, just that, that there you go. <laughs> so let's nitpick Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. So first of all, what is Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2? Well, it's Smash Brothers with Nickelodeon characters. Smash Brothers is a platform fighter. Unlike other fighting games where your goal is to simply beat up some doofus until his health bar depletes, Smash Bros, your goal is to just get your opponent off the stage either by pushing them off and keeping them off or beating them up and raising their damage meter until you punch them off the stage with much fun and pain to be had. What makes it so appealing is not only the fun and tight gameplay, but the roster of fighters as well. Smash has characters from franchises like Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, the Metroid, to other franchises like Sonic the Hedgehog, Metal Gear Solid, Mega Man, and more. That's what makes Smash so appealing. So to get basically a cartoon version of that backed by a company with the most iconic and well-beloved cartoon characters from both past and modern is just a match made in heaven. So we'll start off with that first. Before we get to the roster, let's talk about the gameplay strictly by itself. In the first game, I thought they translated Smash Bros pretty well. Not perfect, but not bad. Thought it was clear to see that development was pretty cheap and pretty rushed, with some characters that felt like they needed to be included just not being there, or certain characters not feeling right or the biggest issue, reused movesets or just completely backwards movesets. April O'Neil was probably one of the worst characters because every single one of her attacks was just the same flippin' flashing pictures animation, which was really lame. Here though, the gameplay has been completely overhauled. First of all, like in the first game, there are three attack buttons. A light attack, a special attack, but instead of a heavy attack, there's a charge attack. The weird bit though is that in Smash, your Smash attacks, your charge attack in this game, are mapped to the right analog stick, which is a technique called C-sticking. However, in this game, instead of being mapped to the charge attack, it's mapped to the light attack, which is fine because some people may prefer that in order to put their nares on the right analog stick. 
but it's kind of feels odd. I really think there should be a way to change this, as I feel like it works best on the charge attack, though I do prefer the charge attack being its own dedicated button. In Smash, if you didn't see stick, you would have to use the analog stick and the attack button at the exact same time, which is fine, but I definitely prefer having it on its own button, as it's just more resourceful regardless, because in Smash, your buttons were A and B, and then either X and Y. Y you don't need two jump buttons. <laughs> So having the charge attack on its own button makes sense, but you can change the button mapping to whatever you like. If you want to have your charge attack mapped to R1, go nuts. <laughs> And the movesets are not only much better than what we saw previously, as again, in the last game, a lot of animations were recycled, the movesets are far more inspired, and they are just flat out stupid, and I love them. You see, in Smash Brothers, all of the characters are fairly serious, so in tandem, they have fairly serious movesets. Mario punches and kicks. Link uses sword, right? However, since Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is just full of cartoon characters, with some exceptions like the Ninja Turtles, of course, their movesets are off the wall. Before we go into detail about some of my favorite movesets, we gotta talk about the character roster. Though before we do so, we gotta get negative for a sec. You all may know this already, especially if you've seen my short, but yes, a lot of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1's roster didn't make it into 2. In All-Star Brawl 1, there were a total of 23 characters including free updates and DLC. However, in this game, there's only two more characters bringing up to a nice round 25, with four being added with DLC for $25. A little steep. Either way, I'm not that upset about characters getting cut. That's honestly fine. I mean, after all, Smash did that to a lesser degree, of course, but still, it's fine. The only thing I'm just confused about is the characters they did decide to cut. All right, all right, I, I wanna do something just for a test here, okay. I'm gonna put five characters up on screen right now, boom. Uh, and I want you to guess which one of these did get cut. Out of these five, I want you to take a guess which one of these actually did get cut. I'll give you a minute. They all got cut. All of them. So let me get this straight. You're gonna add Donatello and Raphael to the game. That's really cool. But no Leo, the main turtle, is missing? I don't even care about Mikey. Whatever, let him go. He's overrated. What the? Just say it. But Leo is if, like, you cut Marth from Fire Emblem. But don't you worry. They did keep April. I care so much. Same with Lincoln Loud. They cut Lincoln Loud out of the game, but kept his goth sister. Like, what? Wouldn't this be the other way around? I don't really know if some of these are the result of Viacom or Game Mill or even Fair Play Labs just being like, you know what would be funny if we got rid of Lincoln Loud and kept the goth chick? <laughs> I don't know whose fault it is, but it just feels backwards to me. Maybe Game Mill just wanted to keep some sales potential for All-Star Brawl 1, so kept some characters exclusive to it. Maybe? But it's just really weird seeing as how this game in many ways as a replacement to the first. But I do think that the new characters do kind of make up for it. First of all, two DLC characters from Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1 came back, being Jenny from My Life as a Teenage Robot and Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. At the time of this writing, I haven't played much of Rocco, but I have played as Jenny and I love how she looks in the game. Something about her color blue and the right lighting just looks really crisp and her light down is literally just stomping around the stage and I absolutely love it, made me laugh out loud. It's not very practical, but dang is it funny. <laughs> As mentioned before, Raph and Donatello got added to the roster and I think they're pretty good. Raph has a charged attack that just looks awesome and his attacks are pretty strong and Donatello has a side special where he swings his staff like a bat to throw projectiles, which is pretty cool. Jimmy Neutron was added while he was arguably shafted from All-Star 1 and while he's not my preferred character to play as, he is pretty cool to play. His side special, you can even control a dog, which is pretty cool. But one character me and my friends were heavily looking forward to and hoping he was going to be added was El Tigre. El Tigre was a very cult classic Nickelodeon show who got shafted because he wasn't Spongebob. And while his light attacks are pretty low range, his specials make his arms stretch for more range attacks. Gerald's moveset is literally just him playing sports. This guy will never be ballin'. <laughs> Squidward is finally here, and other than having the greatest reveal ever, he's a pretty fast fighter with really cool dash attacks. His light up is just a literal bitch slap, and his charge down in neutral air is literally that one Squidward meme. Y you know, yeah, that one. Am I the problem here? But one of the two weirdest characters in this game is Plankton. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't Plankton pretty small for this game? 
Um, no. <laughs> they brought over his mech suit and it's so big and clunky to control. But it kind of rules. He might be a very slow and heavy character, but his sheer strength makes up for it. It's so cool. Not to mention his voice acting is pretty great, but we'll get into that when we talk about it. But can we talk about Grandma Gertie, who can not only swing through the air like Spider-Man, but also has the knee? Yes, Captain Falcon's knee. What? But it's not just the new characters that got a facelift. All of the movesets have been improved for the better. As mentioned earlier, April's movesets was hot trash in Hallstar Brawl 1, but in 2, she actually uses her punches and kicks. Who would have thought? And SpongeBob's rapid attack is just slapping you and then thumbs upping for the final blow. Awesome. And thank god they made the imagination move up instead of down. That bugged me in the original game and they fixed it here. Thank goodness. Another thing I'm happy about with the core gameplay is in the first game you could grab characters and even carry them, which sounds okay on paper, but you have to press X to throw them, unlike Smash where you just flick the stick and throw them right away, which they put in Brawl 2 and is an immediate improvement. But that's not the only added feature. They also added final smashes called Super Attacks, and you do them by filling up the slime meter but that's not all your slime meter does your slime meter has three separate bars fill all three and you can do your super attack but if you have just one or two you can use that portion of the slime meter to make your basic attack even more powerful which definitely helps during those heated gameplay sessions also i haven't tried it but in the gameplay video it also says you can cancel out your attacks just keep in mind you do have to hold down the button for quite some time it's not just a button combination you have to hold down l2 to charge it up then press the button i haven't seen everybody's super attacks yet but the ones i did see were really cool even if some can be a little slow like squidward's everything just feels much better and higher quality compared to what we had previously, and I could not be happier. Also getting a facelift is the presentation. While some areas can look a little bright, the game as a whole just looks so much better. Jellyfish fields look so much more colorful than the first game, and the characters look less blurry. Rooftop Rumble from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has shadows greatly improved as well. In fact, let's go ahead and talk about stages now. The stages are pretty much the same quality as Smash Brothers, with some stages even pretty much being one-to-one -one inspired from stages from Smash Brothers. Like, Urken Armada Invasion is kind of like a mix between Lilac Cruise and Lilac System Corneria from Melee. Thankfully though, for how much they borrow from Smash, they didn't copy Great Gave Offensive, so thank goodness. <laughs> Still, again, they did borrow from some of the bad Smash stages. Like, Fire Warriors is like a smaller version of Bridge of Elden, so just like that stage, if you get to the sides of the stages before the dragons come in, you could pretty much just camp there and charge attack your opponents off the stage. Thankfully, though, like Smash Ultimate, you can choose to change the stages like Battlefield or Final Destination formations for some stages, even though unfortunately not all of them but it's no big deal, I suppose. Even cooler is that you can even do a battlefield formation, but with only two or one platforms. Pretty cool. Even if they have four options, when really could just be two in a selection menu, still though, a welcome addition. But now let's talk about single player content, as there actually is single player content this time around. And it mostly revolves around the campaign. And if you were someone that was disappointed by World of Light from Smash Ultimate, I think you're gonna like this campaign. To preface, I think there's only one cutscene in the campaign, a cutscene where Patrick gets taken and Spongebob follows right after him to try and save him, where you then run into clockwork from Danny Phantom, who explains that Vlad Plasmius, also from Danny Phantom, has gained to control the minds of anyone from any universe. And after realizing how dangerous this could be because he controlled Patrick, Oh no, if he could control Patrick like that, think what he could do to people with minds we go to stop Plasmius. From there, we play through a gauntlet of stages where we fight an army of enemies from the shows in this game, which I gotta throw out there, Smash Ultimate didn't do, doing certain platforming stages which are pretty fun, though are kinda clunky with certain characters. Looking at you, Plankton. And you can also play a Break the Targets-like minigame where you pop slime balloons to claim slime. After which, you fight bosses to advance until we find Vlad, and that's about the extent I got. I did fight Vlad once, but I lost, and you may say, well, why not fight him again? Well, that's because the campaign for All-Star Brawl 2 is roguelike. What's a roguelike, you may ask? A roguelike is where you die, you die, and have to start all over from the beginning. In this sense, after you die, 
clockwork rewinds time to the beginning of your run and brings back your currency you gain from that, which you use to power yourself up more so you can last longer in the run. All of it matters on both your skill level and the items that you buy and bring into your run, whether that has to do with making your character stronger or buying more stocks and health items. And honestly, this is a great idea and something I don't think we have ever seen in Smash before and that's what makes it so cool and unique. I would love Smash Brothers to try something like this as well. The only thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that we don't get much crossover dialogue. We do get stuff with the bosses and we do get specific dialogue with certain shopkeepers like all Spongebob characters have unique dialogue with Mrs. Puff and Jimmy has an exchange with his dad Hugh Neutron in his lab. Through my runs I only ran into four characters so I'm hoping to see more as we go on and I'm hoping for more dialogue between certain characters. We do sort of get that with Gary the snail of all people who handles decorations for your little hub area. Before you talk to buy things from him, you'll have almost all of the characters except Spongebob of course not have a single clue what Gary is saying. I just wish there was more dialogue like that. Either way, no matter if you know what Gary is saying or not, He's really cool because his shop has decorations for your hub area. You see, when you first spawn in your hub area, it's pretty plain and kind of small. But the more splats you earn during the game, the more you can have little places for your hub area. Do they do anything? Are they interactable? No, but it's still pretty cool. You'll find a bunch of stuff like the furniture from the TMNT layer, Lucy Loud's graveyard, and these weird nightmare statues from Rocco's Modern Life. Okay, I have a confession to make. I wasn't allowed to watch Nickelodeon as a kid. I was never allowed to watch a single episode of Spongebob, so the only episode I really saw in full was the first episode. And yeah, I of course know about all the memes. I've watched Danny Phantom because I had a friend who loved it, and now he's a ghost to me at this point. I didn't watch Avatar The Last Airbender, though I did watch a little bit of Legend of Korra. I saw TMNT 2012 and... 2012, which is why it's so weird to me that Raphael has Donatello's voice in, in my head, I mean. And as I said before, I've seen El Tigre because a friend of mine that is not a ghost to me likes it. I know what Jimmy Neutron is because of- There are no such things as aliens! <laughs> Hurry, Jimmy Neutron! You are only home! Women. I have no clue if this is Ren or if this is Stimpy, and I don't really know anything else. So can anyone please tell me who are these beavers and what are they so angry about? Is it because the voice acting in this game is really bad? Because I hope not because it's not bad at all. I had you go in there for a minute, didn't I? Yeah, the voice acting is actually pretty good in this game. Notably from what I've been told and from what I've seen, they actually got almost everyone to reprise their roles. SpongeBob is voiced by Tom Kenny, the man. Though Aang, uh, sorry, uh, Ong. Uh, oof, good thing I saw the Avatar movie, so I know it's pronounced Ong. Is voiced by Dustin Sardella, because the original VA was voiced by a kid, and I don't know if you know this, but Aang's starring role was a... Well, it was a couple of years ago, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, I meant all. Now, the performance that shocked me the most was Plankton, voiced by Mr. Lawrence, who gave it his all in this game. He sounds like an anime character at some points. Does he go this hard in the show? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. As I said previously, I grew up watching TMNT 2012, and in the original cartoon, the VA that voices Raphael voices Donatello in 2012. And so that was the weirdest thing I had to get through. Hold on, hold on. I, I hate him. And unlike the first game where nothing was voice acted until an update, thankfully everything is voice acted, and really they didn't need to. Just voice acting the gameplay would have been good enough. And I mean, hey, Pokemon got away with not voice acting their cutscenes. Certainly this game could have. But they didn't, and that's commendable. Screw Pokemon. Either way, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is in every way a step up and improvement over the first one. From a pretty good campaign, refined gameplay, cool newcomers, and new controls and features. I think Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is worthy of your time. Is it a Smash killer? No. But, do I think it's a genuinely decent game and I think you'll enjoy it, especially if you love Smash but are getting tired of Ultimate? Yeah! And with recent... issues... With Nintendo, with a competitive scene, maybe Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 might have a pretty decent future ahead of it. But I suppose we will have to see when the time comes. Thank you so much to Sandbox Strategies for the review code once again. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I wouldn't have gotten the review code if y'all weren't watching. And I'll see you in the next one.